Amen. Amen. I was, I was in the living room the other day and my wife's cracking up. I said, what you cracking up about? We, the Reader's Digest came in and she's reading some of the quotes and statements. So I, I wrote a few down for you. Listen to this. Why does a woman work 10 years to change a man, then complains he's not the man she married? <laughs> An optimist is someone who falls off the Empire State Building and after 50 floors says, so far, so good. <laughs> I like this one. Dolly Parton said, I'm not offended by blonde jokes because I know I'm not dumb. And I also know I'm not blonde. <laughs> uh, anyway, tom tomorrow night is the great debate. I mean, they're saying about one third of our nation, 100 million people are, people are gonna be listening, watching this debate. Is that amazing? I'm gonna be one of them, how about you, right? I, I, wanna, I wanna hear from both of them tomorrow. So I read this one, I thought it was pretty good. Here we go. The Democrats are the party that says government will make you smarter, make you taller, make you richer, and remove crabgrass from your lawn. The Republicans are the party that says government doesn't work and then they get elected and prove it. <laughs> oh, God is good. <laughs> you got your Bibles, go ahead and open to Matthew chapter four, verse four. Hey, a merry heart does good like a medicine. A broken spirit dries up the bones, amen. We need to pray, pray for God's leadership in, in this election more than ever before, amen? This week is week three of our 21-day challenge. How many have been keeping up with it? All right, all right. Have your cards ready. So we brought out again that in the world we have 21-day challenges for so many different things. The first challenge that we took was to read the Bible consistently. We saw how important it is to read the Word of God, that we can never grow spiritually until we have a consistent Bible reading time in our life. Jesus said here in Matthew 4.4, 4, but he answered and he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So basically saying what, how bread is important to our physical being, the word of God is important to our spiritual being, amen? We saw that as we crave, as we put forth a desire for God's word, we grow. Peter said it like this, 1 Peter 2, 2, 2, 2. As newborn babes desire, crave for the pure milk of the word of God that you might grow that you might grow thereby, amen? So our challenge for week one was to read one chapter each day from the book of Ephesians, right? The second challenge last week we talked about was the challenge to prayer. I brought out to you that prayer is not difficult, but with a little bit of time and a little bit of effort, we can have an amazing prayer time with God. We can get intimate with God. We can... We, we, it, there's just something so special about prayer, amen? Church family, we don't need to dread prayer, but we can become excited about prayer. Andrew Murray said it like this, we must begin to believe that God in the mystery of prayer has entrusted us with a force that can move the heavenly world and can bring its power, its blessings down here to the earth. What amazing power there is in prayer. The apostle Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5, 7, 17, never stop praying. Have an attitude of prayer. Some people say, how can I do that? It's not all that hard. Instead of complaining, try praising. Instead of looking at the bad at stuff, look at the good of stuff. You know, we're going to see the trees turn, turn color. Here's where my mind goes. It's going to get cold. My walk where I walk every day is going to get snow on it and all. But, and I'm going to miss out on the really one of the most spectacular times of year for our area, amen? When them trees turn into bushes of fire and beautiful colors all around us. So take time to thank God for the beautiful trees. Take, thank, take time to thank God for different things. So our second challenge for week two was take 
15 minutes a day. And it was on the cart. Set that time. And then during the course of the week, use that time to pray. Amen? So if you weren't here the last two weeks, we still want you to get involved. I want the ushers to come on forward with those cards again. If you didn't get a card or you lost your card or whatever, just raise your hand. They're free. They're just going to give them to you. And then you can take it and you can still get involved in this. The way it works now, next week, Everybody, bring your card. Make sure you have your name on it. Make sure you write in English and not tongues. <laughs> Amen. And we're going to have a basket up here. We're going to put the cards in. And first service, we're going to draw two cards out. And there'll be two winners, a very special gift that we put together. We got some really cool things in there. And second service, we're going to do the same thing. Why are you doing that? Just a little encouragement to, to read the word, pray, and then to do this last part that we're talking about. Amen? So you need to complete them. If you say, well, I haven't even started them, you got a lot of catching up to do. Amen? But you can do it because it's one chapter, the book of Ephesians, each day. It's 15 minutes of prayer. And then we're going to look today at our third and final spiritual discipline or spiritual challenge. And this one kind of kind of freaks people out when you talk about it. So I want you to follow me uh, today as we get into this. And that's the discipline of fasting. Everybody say fasting. Fasting. That's a nasty word, pastor. In America, it really is, right? Nasty word. Because this is the concept that people get when they think about fasting. You know, I, I, I got to give up meals for three days or I got to, you know, people fasted 40 days and 40. Nah, I can't do that. It's not what we're talking about here. Amen. What we're talking about is giving up something in this week that hinders you from spending a certain amount of time with God. Now, does fasting, can, can, does it involve food? Absolutely. Many people have fasted. Some people in this church are fasters. They'll take a day, two days, three days. I believe it was the, uh, the uh, Wesleyans, if, if I'm not mistaken, or Methodists, I'm not sure which one, but they had was it called? Though? I believe it was called the Wesleyan fast, where they would eat lunch, then not eat dinner, not eat breakfast, and then eat lunch again. And that became a 24-hour fast. And they would do that twice a week while they were in school or as they were preparing for, for ministry or things like that. But I, I don't want to just go in the direction of food. I want to go in the direction of hindrances. Come on, follow me on that. I want to go in the direction of hindrances. We Every one of us, and I'll say that very clearly, every one of us have things that pull us away from God. And that's what we want to try and chop up a little bit, a little bit this week in this week of fasting. Amen. May, you know, some people might say, well, well, what can I fast? Sometimes just fasting soda for a week will drive you crazy. How, how about coffee? Oh, look, man, a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give up 10 meals. <laughs> Don't touch my coffee. <laughs> See, nothing should have control over us. Maybe some of you are the type of type that wake up in the morning and right away you turn the TV on or right away you got to go to the internet and you say, you know what? I'm going to fast that this week. I'm not going to go right to the television right away. I'm not going to turn the radio on. I'm not going to go right to the internet. I'm going to set that 10 or 15 minutes and pray those 15 minutes. See, a fast is not a fast if a fast is just giving up something and not adding something to it. A fast is a fast when you give up to go up. When you're taking, excuse me, some time away from something that might give you pleasure and say, look, I I I'm going to you know, I I'm going to give that to God. Now, we were in the hallway here and someone said to me and Diane, we're there, you know, well, what are you going to fast this week? And my sarcastic, funny wife said, I'm fasting sex. <laughs> She's not, but yeah. <laughs> we'll make sure about that anyway. Wow. Man, you guys are bad, I'm telling you. All right, so what I'm asking, come on, come back to church now. <laughs> Some of the women in here are going, yeah, I'd like it. Yeah. <laughs> I can fast that right away, Pastor. <laughs> Where's Diane? Lay hands on me, sister, amen. <laughs> no, no, no. 
I'm asking that you would consider fasting something in your life, maybe a meal, maybe social media, maybe television, maybe entertainment. It might mean something as small as giving up that cup of coffee in the morning, or maybe even giving up a couple meals during the course of this, this week, amen? The reason is so that we can turn down the distractions and turn up the voice of God. Come on, let me say that again. We want to turn down distractions and we want to turn up the voice of God. See, again, I'm not fasting some just to say, I'm fasting. I'm fasting that time period. Man, just say it's that cup of coffee or whatever it is, that, that small thing right there that maybe controls me and to say, look, Father, I want to give this up to get closer to you this week, amen? Now listen, this is so important. Fasting like prayer is a personal thing, all right? The goal of fasting is to remove distractions so that we can focus more clearly on who God is and what he may be speaking into our lives. Fasting looks different for all different people. Come on, talk to me. Because we have all different things that we struggle with or that get in our way from hearing from God. Would you say amen to that? What we want to do is we want to break a bad habit and make a good habit. Jesus brought this out so clear when he taught about the sower sowing the word. Anybody remember that parable over in Mark chapter 4? We're going to look at it. We're going to look at it, the amplified version, if you, if you have that on your, your whatever you got there, 418. But Jesus brought out that there were all different things that pull people down. They come to church, they hear the word, they get excited. Satan steals the word out of them, the, the one among stones and, and all of that. But when he hits about this one among thorns, you know who he's talking to? Christians. Because it doesn't say they fell away. It says they became unfruitful. But what he does is he shows us different things that hinder us in our lives. Look, Mark chapter 4, verse 18. It's up on the screen there. And the ones sown among the thorns are others who hear the word. How many have heard the word? How many are hearing the word right now? Right? You're hearing the word, right? Then watch what happens. Ready? Say with me. The cares and anxieties of the world. Let me ask you a very simple question. Does this world have cares? Does this world have anxieties? But watch what he says. The cares and the anxieties of the world. Then he goes and he brings out another group. The distractions of the age. Whoa! Here, here's what I'm going to be as honest as I can. This is the part that's choking me. So many different distractions, so many good things that can get in the way. Anybody else here? Distractions, things. We got entertainment 24-7. We got toys we can play with. 20. There's always something that can pull us away from spending that time with God. And listen, I don't know about you, but when I pray, I get distracted in my mind. Anybody else? You're, you're talking to God and all of a sudden you say, oh, I forgot that's over. Oh, I forgot that. So it's just another form of distractions that come against us. All right. So the distraction of the age, every age has distraction. This age has more distractions than any other age because we have so many things in this age. Amen. Listen, growing up in my house, I still remember where I lived on Summer Street and Patterson. We didn't even have closets back then. You remember the eight armoires that they put in the room? That's all we had. Now people have closets in every room, a whole attic, a whole basement, and they got to rent out storage places too. <laughs> Stuff. Okay. And, and, and the cares, anxieties of the world, distraction of the age. Look at this. The pleasures and delights and false glamours and deceitfulness of riches. Now, he's not saying riches are bad. There's nothing wrong with money. What's wrong with money is when it controls you. Oh, pastor, that's wrong. Don't you know the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. That's correct. The love of it. But you need money to live in this world. 
Amen. So don't let people throw that nonsense on you. But if money controls you that you can't even give an offering to God or help somebody, then you got to work on that area in your life. All right. Next part. And the craving and passionate desires for other things, watch now, creep in. Choke and suffocate the word and it becomes fruitless. See, the other ones all fell away. This group of people, they become fruitless. And I, I hate to say it, I see fruitlessness in areas of my own life because of things that I see here. I see fruit in certain areas and then I see fruitlessness in others. Anybody else? Anybody know what I'm talking about? There's areas that I say, wow, what I could be doing for God in this area of my life, what I could be doing for the kingdom, what I could be doing for people if I didn't let this area take such control of my life. And that's what we want to chop away as we enter into this. Amen. So God doesn't want us fruitless, but he wants us fruitful. I didn't say fruity. <laughs> wants us fruitful. Amen. But church family, again, cares, anxieties, distractions, pleasures, delights, false glamour, deceitfulness of riches, craving and passionate desires for other things. They come in, they choke God's, they choke what God's best is in our life. In a sense, are any of these things wrong? No, in the sense they're not. It's when we make them God's over us. I love the way uh, the last verse of uh, 1 John says, little children, keep yourself from idols. You see that in your King James there. And if you look at that, you go, I don't, I don't have no Buddha statue in my house or, or, or this or that. But the Amplified brings it out so well. Little children, keep yourself from anything and everything that would take first place in your life that belongs to God. Wow, it's just so powerful. Anything can become an idol. Anything. Anything, amen? God wants us to bear good fruit. Jesus said it like this in John 15, 8. Here it is in the Amplified again. When you bear, produce much fruit, my Father is honored and glorified, and you show and prove yourself to be true followers of, my, of me. Amen? So how does, a true, how does a person become a true follower of Jesus Christ? By producing good fruit. Amen? All right, so let's look at what fasting does in our life. Let's look at breaking some bad habits and making some good habits. Would you turn over to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 18. First, as we said before, fasting is a personal spiritual habit. It is not about everybody knowing what you're doing. Hey, you know what I'm doing tonight, hon? No, what? I'm fasting, therefore I'm not cooking tonight. Honey, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. I'm just fasting. <laughs> woo, woo. <laughs> Come on, guys. Talk to me. Amen. We can go on both ends of this. Some people, oh, I'm fasting. And other people won't say anything. What's wrong? Oh, I can't tell you. <laughs> you know, I can't let my right hand know what the left is doing. <laughs> Come on, don't get flaky on me on this. Amen. David Peach made this statement. This is so good. While a fast by nature is inconvenient, it should be an inconvenience to you and not those around you. <laughs> I like that. Did you get that? How many need to hear it again? All right, just a couple of you, so I'm not going to read it. No, while a, fast, while a fast by nature is inconvenient, it should be inconvenient to you and not all those around you, amen? Oh, I'm fasting. I can't do that. Oh, I'm fasting. I'm so weak. I can't lead. I can't do anything. Get, get off that fast then. There is nothing spiritually being done in that fast with an attitude like that. In the, in the, this is the uh, English Standard Version, Matthew 6, 16. I like the way it brought this out. Uh, get it up on the screen there. Thank you. And when you fast, do not look gloomy. <laughs> What's the matter with you? I'm fasting. Oh, boy, you're so spiritual. And it's an interesting statement that he makes here about that. Watch this. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. Woo, that's a hard one, right? 
for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have their reward. Underline that. They have their reward. What is their reward that they have? The praises of man. It's exactly. Kyle, I'm fasting. Oh, pastor, you're spiritual. That's my reward. Not really. I know Kyle, he's a spiritual man. He said, yeah, okay, you're going to go tell everybody? All right, keep going on. Verse 17. But when you fast, anoint your head. In other words, take a bath, shower, whatever you do. And walk around. Man, what's that ungodly smell? I'm fasting, man. Woohoo! Get some underarm stuff and put it under there, amen? All right. When, well, we, we don't really anoint our heads with oil nowadays. Maybe a little mousse might help once in a while or, or gel, right? I guess that would be anointing your head, right? And then he says, wash your face. Take some time and scrub up that your fasting may not be seen by others. Why is that? Because it's a personal time between you and your father. Now listen, let's just talk me and Diane for a moment. If I'm going to make a decision to fast for three days, I think it would be a, a courtesy for me to say to her, Diane, I'm going to be fasting for three days. So I'm not, you know, we're not going to be cooking meals and stuff like that. D do you understand that? Your wife makes this big meal. Oh, I'm just fasting. Yeah. Big meal. I give you five minutes. You'll break that fast. Amen. Pastor, how do you break a fast? Breaking a fast, they say, is very sensitive because your body can, you know, it, it, it's, it, it, it's, you know, slowed down and all that. So the best way to break a fast, I'm going to tell you, write this down, is a big chocolate cake, amen, uh, with ice cream on top. <laughs> I am just kidding. <laughs> Don't do that. You'll be in trouble. Amen. All right, here we go. That your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your father who sees in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Who do we want in a, a reward from in our fasting? Our heavenly father. I believe the King James version says there, he will reward you openly. He'll reward you. Let God reward you. Amen. Oh, but I just want everybody to know, man, I didn't think I could do this. And now I'm able to do it. This is something between you and dad. Amen. Something between you and your heavenly father. Again, fasting is something that we should do between us and our heavenly father. We don't need to broadcast it. It should be a personal time. Amen. Ed Cole said it like this, a fast is not a hunger strike. Fasting submits to God's commands. A hunger strikes makes God submit to our demands. This guy, Andrew Boner said, fasting is abstaining from anything that hinders prayer. Did you get that? Fasting is abstaining from anything that would hinder prayer. Boy, that, that, that's a good one. So we see that in our fast, it's supposed to draw us closer to God. It's to break chains that we might have so that we can get closer to the lover of our soul. Amen. This, this person, Ol has by said, the purpose of fasting is to loosen to some degrees the ties which bind us to the world of the material things and our surrounding as a, as a whole in order that we may consecrate all of our spiritual power upon the unseen and the eternal things. Is that good? I want you to go over to the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 3. So we see that when we enter into a fast, it has to be for the right motive, amen, the right heart. This week, you're not entering into a fast so you can put your name into the drawing next week to win the, the prize. Look, we're trying to develop spiritual disciplines in our life. And the main three dis spiritual disciplines I can think of is, again, reading the word of God, again, praying, and again, letting 
cutting loose of different things in our lives. And I'm really, really hoping this week that you're not looking at this just as food. I really, I almost want to say don't make food the issue, but if food is an issue, then go ahead and fast a couple meals or whatever you decide to do. Again, use wisdom with food. Some people that go, on, I'm going on a 40 day and 40 night fast. Really? What was the longest fast you ever did? 12 hours? You dead. <laughs> Don't come back to me. You dead. Amen? Listen, people that fasted 40 days and 40 nights, you better make sure you get with your doctor and make sure he approves something like that. Amen? But to fast a couple meals, th that's fine. Listen, when you're fasting, I, I suggest... Don't, if you're going to do a, a, a food fast, don't skip the water. Your body needs water. In fact, drinking a lot of water will actually cleanse your body as you're fasting. Amen? Pastor, you're absolutely right. I'm going to drink lots of coffee through that fast. Listen, if those that are going to fast a day or two, if you drink a lot of coffee, you're most likely going to get a good headache. So you need to really pray about that beforehand. Lord, help me through this. Get this caffeine, these sugars, these things out of my body. So there's going to be, and maybe you want to start with more of a fruit juice type or a vegetable juice type of fast if you want to go in that, in that direction. But really what I want to talk about is little things that spoil the vine, little things that just steal our time, things that we could say, you know what? That TV does not need to be put on first thing in the morning. I'm going to give those 15 minutes minutes to a time of prayer. Come on, are you with me, guys? Oh, pastor, we just wanted you to come up and say, no, oh, you got to get, no, I, I just want to chip away, chip away, see that we can get rid of some of this and watch and see what happens to our spiritual life when we make those decisions. There are so, there is so much stuff that hinders us from serving God. Amen. All right. So it's important to have the right heart in fasting. And this is what Isaiah said. That this is such a powerful portion of scripture concerning fasting. Here's, here we go. Verse 3. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Listen, they're saying we're fasting, God. Why don't you see it? Why have we afflicted our soul? We could be eating, drinking, and being merry. And here we are on this ground here. You, you don't even notice it. In fact, in the day of your fast... You find pleasure and you exploit all your laborers. Woo! Verse 4. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate and to strike with the fist of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Is it a fast that I have chosen? Watch what he says now. Here's a fast that God has chosen. A day for a man to afflict his soul. Is it to bow down his head like a, a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth in ashes? Would you call this a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? The NIV Bible brings this out real good. Excuse me, verse five. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? <clears throat> only a day for a man to humble himself? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for laying on sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a day acceptable to the Lord? In other words, here's what God is saying. You're showing me this outward show. You're throwing dust on your head. You're ripping your clothes. All that stuff that they did in the Old Testament. That's not what I want. God doesn't want a physical thing. God wants a heart thing. All right, verse six. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? All right, let's see what he has chosen. To loose the bonds of wickedness, hmm. to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Every bondage in our life can be broken. We can come to a place where nothing has control over us besides the spirit of almighty God. Is that going to be easy? No. Now watch what he says. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? Well, that's an interesting statement. So if we want to choose a, God, a fast that God said, maybe if we're just saying, just use it as an example. 
we go and spend seven dollars at McDonald's for for a, a Big Mac, whatever. You, you know what I'm saying? That we can take that seven dollars and give it to a poor person. Watch, watch, watch. To share your bread with the hungry, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out. When you see the naked, you cover them. In other words, you see someone hurting and you say, well, I got this extra in my fast. I can be a blessing and not hide yourself from your own flesh. Now watch verse eight. This, this is amazing. Then if this is what you do, he says, if you choose to do a fast that honors almighty God, then, then after you do it, watch what happens. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. I love this next verse. When I started put, putting this study together, it, it just jumped at me. Ready? Say it with me. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. I want to believe this week that when we fast and we fast certain things, sicknesses that have been hindered in our body be broken this week. How many can agree with that? How many can say, man, that's what it says. It says that if I fast the way God showed me to fast, not a fast of the flesh, but a flesh, fa flesh fast of my heart, God says he'll let my light spring forth like the morning. My healing shall, shall come quicker. My righteousness shall go before me and God's protection, the glory of the Lord shall be my real gu rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. Wow. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. Could it be that God's not answering? Could it be that we're not hearing, here I am, because we have things that are hindering us? We have a block, a wall between us and God? Now, you know, I know some of you to come out and say, but we have Jesus. We do have Jesus. But I know Tom. I know stuff in my life that hinders me from getting deeper into the word, getting more into prayer, getting more spiritual, or having spiritual disciplines in my life. Anybody else? Jesus has opened the door wide. He has broken the veil. He has opened the, the throne room of God. But boy, I sure got stuff that hinders me from getting in there. It's not God that's stopping me from going in. It's me that stops me from going in, right? Then he goes on, he continues. If you take away the yoke, the burden from your midst, the pointing of the finger, you know how, you know the old say about the pointing of the finger, right? Kaylee, you're this, 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 and three are pointing right back out at me, right? You might as well take the thumb too, that's pointing. So all four are pointing at you. When we judge someone else, we should really look at ourselves and see what we're judging. Amen. The pointing of the finger, the speaking wickedness. If you extend your soul and satisfy the afflicted soul. Look, here we go again. Then your light shall dawn in the darkness. Your, your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continuously. He'll satisfy your soul during dry times. He'll strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you, talk about our children, the, the people that we help raise up, they shall build the old waste places. You may raise up the foundation. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. All for fasting? Wow. <coughs> wow. Come on, talk to me, guys. There's a lot of promises right there in that verse just by taking a little time. Again, I'm not standing up here and I'm saying it over and over and over. You know, you need to fast three days. You need to fast five days. I'm saying, can we give up a meal? Can we give up a, a, a soda? Can we give up social media in the morning or whatever it might be that, is, that you know pulled you away from God? And we say, I'm going to fast that. I'm going to put that off to the side. Look at all the blessings you get. Your health is going to speed forth speedily. You're going to be satisfied during times of drought, so forth and so on, all because we made a decision to let this spiritual discipline operate in our lives and get closer to Almighty God. Is that a good thing? All right. 
Before Jesus entered into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil 40 days and 40 nights, we only see three examples there in Matthew chapter 4. The Bible says that he did what? He fasted. He fasted. And there's an interesting statement there. On the 40th day of his fast, verse 2, it says it like this. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. And they say in a long extended fast like this of 40 days that your body will actually lose a desire for food. But when that desire for food comes again, starvation is now entered in. That's what, what happened to Jesus right here. He was start, starting to starve at this part. And what is the first thing the devil brought against him? If you be the son of God, turn these stones into, into bread. Amen. The apostle Paul, before the, the, they were sent out, it says this in Acts chapter 13, verses 1 and 3. And just ask you to write it because we're out of time. But before they were sent out for the work of the ministry, in verse 2 it says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. That probably means they came together, let's say in the morning, they gave up breakfast, they gave up lunch, they prayed together, they went, and they went back home and they enjoyed their meal. Amen? Doesn't say they fasted for 40 days. Doesn't even say they fasted for three days. What it says, they took a little bit of time to be alone with God. They ministered. Then the Bible says the Holy Spirit spoke they laid their hands on them. They sent them away. There are so many scriptures and even medical science says that a proper fast is good for our bodies. Amen. So here is this week's challenge. You ready? Choose something. And you'll see it on that last line there that has been holding you back from going a little bit deeper with God and fast it for this week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. It can be coffee. It can be TV. It can be social media, the news. It can be a couple meals or some form of entertainment that has pulled you away from God. Whatever it is, give it up for this week and then see what happens in your life. Remember, break a habit, make a habit. So today, let's make Bible reading. Let's make prayer. And now let's add in even this part of fasting into our lives. And in closing, you remember Daniel, right? Before the angel appeared to Daniel, he was on what we call the Daniel fast or a partial fast. He gave up rich meat stuff. In other words, he gave up the cannolis. He gave up the, uh, the lasagna. He gave up the rich stuff and he ate more humble food for that week before his God and an angel appear to him. Amen? Is that good? All right. Since this is the third week, if you got your card, hold it up. Hold it up. Hold it up. You know, it's so interesting nowadays with all these electronics <clears throat> that we don't have a Bible to stick these cards in anymore, right? Uh, different world. But anyway, I'm believing that many of you are going to do this and you're going to see uh, just a uh, 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 a deepness that's going to start developing in you for a love for Almighty God. Yeah, I'm speaking to someone, someone, it's actually more than one person, that you had a very deep relationship with God, but things have kind of, life, marriage, uh, things have just kind of gotten out of control. And you go to bed at night many times saying, God, I wanted to love on you today and I barely had any time. I believe a spark is going to be lit again this week in your lives. Little spark. Again, not looking for anybody to fast 40 days and 40 nights. I'm looking for all of us to say, I can give up a little to go up a lot. Amen. Father, right now we pray over these cards. This has been an exciting three, day, three weeks for me, Lord. An exciting time where we could just Keep growing as a church. Oh, Lord, we can come in and hear messages that make us laugh and all that. And that's good. There's a time and place for all of it, Lord. But, Lord, the most important thing of a church is that it's a spiritual hospital, Lord. It's a place that we can go and get healed and be a blessing, Lord, and that we can be a blessing out to our neighbors and our community. Father, I pray over these cards that I pray for those that took this, this few weeks so serious, Lord, and that we have, 
<coughs> excuse me, we have grown together in it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's close in prayer today. Again, if you walked in late, pick up the fall fest cards that are out there and just share them with neighbors and friends. What a way to invite people to church. It's gonna be right there in our church service. We're gonna have some coffees outside and things for the adults, but we're gonna have some special, special, special stuff for the kids. The big obstacle course will be back, all that kind of stuff. Face painting, yada, 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 yada. If you can help us out in this, bring us a bag of candy. There'll be some baskets gets outside uh, as you walk in just drop it in there please remember all the candy must be wrapped we can't use candy that is not wrapped and you know just little little candy bars or little heart candies things like that and we'll make sure the kids are blessed that day father i thank you for the service today thank you that jesus is lord as we close this service today, we actually close this month, this spiritual discipline month, September, which is almost like a beginning. I pray, Father, that we have just taken another step, another <coughs> journey in our lives. Now, Father, I just pray that each and every person in here knows you, Lord Jesus, as Lord and Savior. If you're here today, and you have never asked the Lord Jesus to come into your heart, to be your Lord, to be your Savior. And today, you'd like to make that decision. I didn't say join this church. I said make a decision to know Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. If you'd like to do that today, then pray this prayer with me, and we'll all pray it together to make it easy for you. Say this with me. My dear God in heaven, I believe today that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. <clears throat> I believe that he died on the cross, that he rose on the third day. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I thank you that I repent of my sins today <clears throat> and I receive your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. This has been a presentation of Christian Faith Fellowship Church located in Hardiston, New Jersey. If you have asked Jesus into your heart for the first time or are recommitting your life to him, we would like to send you a free gift. This gift includes a Bible, daily devotional, and a CD explaining the life-changing decision you have made. We would also like to invite you to attend one of our weekly services. Our service times are Sunday at 9 and 11 a.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. We are excited to offer a ministry for every age group, including an exciting children's ministry and a dynamic teen ministry. For more information, please visit www.cffchurch.org or call us at 973-209-7786. You can also download our app by searching for CFFC in the App Store or Droid Marketplace. Also be sure to check us out on Facebook for pictures, news, and upcoming events. Thanks for watching.